Hi, I'd like to introduce you to the new Feather Brush Pack for Painter and Particle Shop. This image is a um, painting that I completed using the Feather Brush Pack. And let me show you how you can use this and some of the ways that these brushes can create some exciting brush marks on your next project. In this image, you can see that I've done a grayscale of two parrots flying through the jungle. And what I'd like to do is start with some of the brushes so you get a feel for how you can use them. Many of these brushes are created with a certain theme in mind, but it doesn't mean that you have to stay within that theme. And every brush may evoke something new that you can impart in your particular painting. So let's take a look at the very first brush called Abstract. Abstract is basically a blender brush. It's going to break apart the pixels that you see on the screen. So it's important that you recognize that if you use a brush you have to have existing pixels on a layer or the canvas layer. So if I wanted to break up a certain part of the painting, maybe I wanted to add a little texture in this area, you can see that just applying firm pressure in that area breaks those pixels up and softens them a little. Gives it a, a nice, almost a nice painterly look, as if you were working on pastel paper. So that's the abstract brush. The next brush is Boca brush, and we're going to go ahead and add a new layer so we can work with this brush. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add an overlay over the top of this so these brushes will really come. The next brush we're going to look at is the Boca brush, and you can see that I've added a new layer above the canvas layer, filled it with a blue value, set it to multiply blend mode, and brought the opacity down on it. Boca brush is a good brush for, for adding the effect of light or extra visual interest to your painting. And you can see that I'm just dabbing it in here and there. And you'll notice that I oftentimes will use what we call stroke attributes. And what this means is I can work with a particular merge mode or composite method and apply that to the brush. So for, for uh, example, I may choose reverse out and I get a different effect with that brush. Or perhaps um, screen, which is one of my favorites. It gives us a nice light appearance. And I'm working right on, the, uh, on this blue layer here to impart that special effect with the bokeh brush. The next brush we're going to look at is called Crinkled. And this brush, basically, uh, what it does is it, it breaks up pixels. So we're going to go back to the canvas layer. And I may want to add um, you know, a visual uh, texture or interests to a certain part of the area. And you can see how this brush enhances certain parts of the, paint, of the painting. And just, you know, again, giving it that something different, that something special. Um, by simply choosing um, some nice visual texture with a crinkled brush. Feathery is um, a brush that I would use for bird feathers. And it is the smaller or the pin feather that we would use. And I'm going to come back to that brush because I want to, first of all, go to the brush called Raven. And the Raven brush is the one that you will use to impart most of the feathering of any bird that you're doing, whether it's parrots or chickens or eagles, whatever it happens to be. So with this particular, um, uh, with this particular uh, brush, I'm going to start off by feathering uh, these, these parrots. And we'll just start off with this bird here. And you'll notice that I do nice quick brush strokes and pull out towards the direction that I want those feathers to uh, lay down. So I would continue to feather this bird 
based upon the colors that I want to use and perhaps I'll you know decide to go in and use some green in this area and I'm going to zoom in a bit on this and so this brush is feather and this would be the brush that I would use for the main fe feathering of the parrots and we'll go maybe to a yellow here and put in a nice yellow value here and maybe some orange and we're just going to continue to add these colors to the birds so this is how you would feather your bird um, again if I wanted to add some nice highlights I would change this to um, screen mode and I'm going to go back to that beautiful blue here and go back over those blue marks and just add some nice highlights to those feathers as well and back to default and for the larger feathers it would be you know a firmer brush stroke and then just pulling out in the direction that you want those feathers to lie in and I would just continue to feather my parrot with this particular brush, Raven. Now we'll go back to the feathery brush and this would be the one that I would use to uh, do some of the uh, finer details and a very again a very light brush stroke. Um, I like this brush because it has a very nice edge to it. Um, when you lay the brush down it has a very soft and feathery edge um, almost as if um, it's very lacy at the end or very feathery take that out and maybe use that to just go in here a little bit with some more colors and pulling out I just have more fun with this. This is just a lot of fun to work with these brushes. I use my Alt key to sample colors if I want to add a specific color in a certain area. And once I start getting a lot of color in here, then it gives me that opportunity to, to play more with some of the existing colors. The next brush is Flight. And this brush you would use again as more of an expressive brush where you may want um, you know, to add some visual or textural interest. The next brush is called Hummingbird. This one is uh, a beautiful wing type of brush. Um, you certainly could uh, use it for bugs, for hummingbirds, or any kind of uh, uh, creative effect that you were looking for that involved wings. The next brush is called Paradise. And this brush I would use, um, you know, to create more of the effect of um, when I was 
developing it, I thought, oh, bird of paradise, you know, very uh, beautiful, feathery tails, um, hair, <laughs> lots of different uses you could do uh, with this one. Good for roosters or any type of uh, bird that has a long, feathery type of tail. This brush is called Parrot, and again, it has uh, some lovely uh, effect to it. I would use it maybe to uh, work on wings, add a little extra color. The next brush is Peacock. And this brush, the way you would work with this one, and I'm going to get a nice light color here, is to pull down from the top and then bring the brush down. So it would be from the top and pull down. And again, a very textural brush, good for, um, good for of course, feathers, good for trees, uh, good for visual uh, interest and any kind of um, light or you can see how feathery and soft the brush is. Very lacy. The next brush is called Pheasant, and I like this one again for not only wing feathers but tail feathers as well. Um, it's, a, it's a very nice brush for um, bringing in uh, tail feathers. It has a rather variegated look to it, so when you lay the brush down with nice uh, long brush strokes, you're going to get a broken effect which is, um, you know, to me gives you that kind of a look of a pheasant feather where you have the, um, the white areas that appear. So again, good for wings, uh, very expressive uh, brush stroke. The next brush is called Plume, and this one, um, get a good color for this one. This one is uh, a very, uh, good brush for uh, that look of a boa or um, a tropical bird, uh, tails, even um, if you wanted to use it to, um, you know, put different colors into your trees or background. It's another beautiful brush. Would make a good um, peacock. Um, feathers as well. Any kind of tropical bird with lots of color. This brush is called Quill and this one um, this one I would use uh, more than likely for uh, areas in my painting where uh, perhaps in the trees where I wanted to create some interest. Um, you could use it uh, as kind of organic looking foliage working its way through the jungle and of course you could also work with different composite methods or bring the opacity down to minimize the effect a little soften it raven I talked about and sandpiper is another good basic brush for um, you know, working through your painting, colorizing it. So for example, if I just wanted to start with maybe a, a nice blue on this bird and then develop the raven feathers over the top, um, I could do that. So this is a good brush for just doing some sketching, uh, getting some color in, and very soft and very expressive brush. Lots of beautiful texture that works into this brush as well. So 
one of my favorites. Would use it, um, you know, in my trees to start to colorize my trees. Definitely could work with stroke attributes here. Perhaps um, again, screen method. Bringing some interesting light in. And the last brush is called Wing. And again, this brush would be good for, um, again, visual texture. We'll, <clears throat> let's get a good color here. Um, I like using it, I'm going to add a new layer here. I like using it to um, basically do tree trunks, add extra texture, highlights, and of course it um, would be a good brush to just bring out some of your highlights in certain areas. Good brush for painting in um, flying birds. You know, maybe if you wanted more birds coming through the forest. So I hope you enjoy this new brush pack. Feather. Have fun. Take care.